We are now joined by John Wayne, the gunslinger par, a legend in the kickboxing and Wi Fi atmosphere. He just made his one championship debut. Unfortunately, things didn't go exactly as planned. Still, that was a great performance from you. How do you feel both physically and mentally after this fight? Um, I'm just a little bit devastated. Uh, I trained for 12 weeks. I really uh, put 100% into every single day. Uh, it was such a big opportunity to fight such a superstar in Nikki. Um, unfortunately, it didn't go my way. Um, I tried to be aggressive. I tried to apply lots of pressure, uh, but uh, I just got caught. Um, yeah, I didn't even see the kick coming, so so uh, I have no excuses. I, I, I uh, it was just it is what it is. But um, I'm just so thankful I had the opportunity to to make that walk for one, um, to step into the cage. Uh, it was such an exhil exhilarating feeling, and I'm I'm so proud just to be a, a part of the uh, one championship family. You mentioned before that you you did feel like you would meet Nikki Holskin at some point in your career. After having faced him now in the circle, what can you say about that experience? Yeah, I want to find him again. Um, I hopefully, uh, Mr. Chatru will give me the opportunity to have maybe one or two more fights. Um, see, what happened was uh, uh, 20 months ago, I had my last kick kickboxing fight in Japan, uh, and I haven't had a kickboxing fight in 20 months. Uh, I've had hip surgery. Um, I've had recovery. I've done everything. And uh, this was my, my, my first fight back without even a warm-up. So the, the take on uh, the number one guy in the world, on the number one promotion in the world, uh, for my very first fight back, um, it, I, I had to go. Uh, you, you have to dare to be great. And if I had a one, it would have been amazing. But same time, I, I didn't get the victory. But at the same time, I'm, I'm proud of myself. That, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself that I had the opportunity to, to test my skills against the champion. All right, yeah, so you did mention you came back from a long layoff and from a major surgery. Do you think that uh, that factored into your performance? Uh, definitely. Um, I just felt a little bit ring ring rust. Um, it would have been nice to have uh, a warm-up fight first, someone maybe not quite as a killer. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that uh, I had the courage to step up and fight the number one guy in the world. Um, after so long, um, after all the different circumstances, uh, I'm not sure if many people know this or not either, but, um, I went to Singapore by, by myself without a trainer, uh, uh, because in Australia it's, um, it, it was 10 days quarantine in Singapore and it was, and it's 15 days quarantine in, in Australia. So it's, 15, it's 25 days quarantine. And I didn't want to ask any of my friends to sacrifice 25 days of their life to be stuck in a hotel room. So I went over by myself. I asked Mr. Chatri if I could borrow one of his play trainers to help me in the corner to give me to give me water in between rounds. Um, so I was a pretty much a one man show taking on the best guy in the world. So um, uh, uh, I'm just proud of my courage that I, I wasn't afraid to step up as, as, as by myself and, and, and fight the best. That was very noble indeed. And that was obviously a tough fight. Started out very quickly and you were actually doing very well in the first round. At what point do you think in that fight that things started to change, though? Um, I, I didn't even see the spin kick. Uh, the spin kick knocked me down. I remember getting in the count, I, and I thought the, the 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 force of the kick pushed me down. I didn't know it didn't actually um, it had knocked me down as as a, 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 a headshot. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed. Um, I, I felt as the round was going on that I was I was getting the points back. I, I, was, I was saying to myself as as I was fighting. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm coming back. I've got this. I can do this. And then again, I didn't see the second kick come either. So um, I, I know I can do better. I know um, uh, with the proper preparation and and a little bit more confidence, I have a little bit more ring time before I quit Nikki, that it, uh, it could be a different outcome. Um, and we'll just see what happens in the future. I, I, I'm 40, nearly 45 years old. I love my job. I don't want to stop because this is the only thing I, I, I live for. So I just want to keep um, fighting, keep entertaining, and, and keep uh, giving you guys entertaining matches. All right. In that second round, he landed a sharp left hook that sent you to the canvas again. After that punch landed, were you able to recover it from, from it enough and to continue, or did that shot affect you from that point on? Um, to tell you the truth, I didn't even know that hit me until uh, I watched the replay. 
I, I didn't even know that was a, a shot. I thought I was only the two head kicks. So uh, when I watched the video, guys, oh, there was three. Holy crap. I had no idea that I even hit the left hook. Everything was on automatic after that first spin kick. So uh, it was just, uh, just a shock to me watching that as it was to everybody else. Yeah, and of course, after that uh, that, se that second knockdown in the second round, the, the, f the one that ended it was a high left kick. Yes. You actually showed your toughness and you were able to get back up to your feet from that shot. Do you think the referee could have allowed you to continue in that situation or was it a good stoppage for you? I was hoping he would. Um, uh, I just remember him being on his knees, just waving his hands and singing, ah, no, this can't be happening. I've trained so hard and I've given everything that I've got. And then um, to have it waved away is just so devastating and so heartbreaking. Uh, the referee's going to do a job to protect the fighters from themselves. Um, uh, I, I, I'd keep getting up 15, 20 times if I, if I could, but um, luckily the referee was there just to, uh, to, to save me from being, being stupid. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a, definitely a tough fight for you. Uh, what was the most difficult part about fighting Nikki Hulskin? What did he do in there that gave you a lot of trouble? Nothing. Nothing besides having in, in, invisible kicks. Um, I thought I was doing great. I thought I, I thought my punches were landing, my left was landing. I, I, I was showing his timing off with his punching off with my left. Uh, I just did not see the kicks. I just I, I just didn't see him. But uh, besides that, I, I felt like I was doing great. I felt like I was. Uh, it was very even. Um, that's that's why I want a rematch. I, I I know I can do better, and I know I can beat him, and I and I know I can become uh, even at my age still one of the best in the world. If, if there is a rematch down the line, uh, what would you do different? Uh, are there any adjustments that you would make? Uh, just make sure I have a tight, tight, tighter defense. Make sure my hands are uh, glued to my to my head. Um, yeah, be just as aggressive. Um, to come forward just as much, but uh, a little bit smarter instead of uh, offense as well as defense. And now that you've shared the circle with him, what can you say about Nikki Holskin as a fighter? What's, a, what's your opinion of him? What, what kind of message do you have for him? We actually had a little chat last night on uh, the direct messages on Instagram. Uh, he's really cool. He's a really nice guy. Uh, I, I said to him, maybe if I can get one or two more wins on, under my belt on the one championship promotion, maybe we can have a rematch in the future. He said, I I'd love to have another rematch. It, it, it would be the, the money fight. It would be the big one. So, um, Hopefully, uh, I'll knuckle down. I'll do my best. Um, I also spoke to um, Nicky Holson's son. Um, he is so nice. He was so respectful. He was um, he was saying that he'd, he'd really respect everything I've done in my career, and hopefully he can walk on my footsteps as well and do what I've done overseas in Thailand. So uh, Nicky's family is amazing. Um, again, I'm thank you for the opportunity to, 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 to share the cage with him. Um, I've got nothing but respect. Him, Raymond, uh, Holland... Uh, just everything about the whole um, situation was just perfect. Um, even though I didn't get the win, uh, I'm just so grateful. All right. So obviously the question is, uh, where do you go from here? Uh, you mentioned you wanted to continue and you're still motivated to, to reach the top. What Looking at like the, the one Super Series uh, landscape here, do you have any potential opponents in mind for your return? Uh, no one in particular. Um, I just want to um, fight, entertain, get paid, um, live out my last few years while I'm still active and still um, injury-free and, and just put on good fights and, and entertaining fights and um, give, the, give the one championship fans uh, entertaining battles that they'll, they'll hopefully look back upon and think, yeah, John Wayne, I, I enjoy watching these fights. So I, I just want to be an entertainer. I just want to have fun. All right. And obviously you've been doing this for a very long time, very experienced. Um, and you may have been asked this question before, but do you, when do you think the end will come? Um, body able, mind able, when do you think, uh, or how many years do you think you have left in you to fight? Uh, I'll, I'll be 45 next month in May. Uh, it's crazy. I never thought I'd be doing it this long, but I love it. I love it so much. It, it's a, it's the only thing I, I, want to live for um i love my family of course but have an ordinary job and and work nine to five and be depressed and 
look forward to my Fridays. I, I want to train. I want to fight. I even um, not even um, fighting, just training for ten weeks, preparing for a camp. There, there's there's nothing more enjoyable than meeting the boys every afternoon, hitting the tracks, doing the pads, doing the sparring. It just it just fills my heart full of happiness. Um, even though it's a violent sport, it's it's at the same time it's a uh, it's it's very bonding. So. Uh, I, I suggest martial arts to every single person in the world. It's 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 uh, soul healing. All right, this fight was shown on TNT primetime in the United States in a sport such as caged Muay Thai that you practically made possible. How do you feel about it being showcased in one championship to millions of people around the world? Um, it is so humbling to see uh, an idea that I had laying on my pillow uh, in 2012, I came up with the idea. I, I remember I wrote on the social media, um, I, I, I've come up with this idea. I want to do cage Muay Thai, uh, MMA gloves, da, da, da. And the ridicule that I received was just uh, crazy. Everyone thought I was bastardizing the sport. Out of all the people that would do this, it was John Wayne Parr. Uh, how could he? Um, somebody even said, the only reason you're trying to make cage Muay Thai is to make money. I was like, of course, I want to make money. I like money. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm so crazy to see that now that it's um, all the elite, the elite flying from all over the world to compete on um, such a, uh, I believed in the idea and to see it with my own eyes and to see how promising it's become. It's, um, it just makes, I, I, I hope it's uh, when I die that it's uh, part of my grace so that uh, I help create my way a little bit more violent than it should be. All right. Much respect to you, the legend, John Wayne Parr. Thank you for your time here, and we can't wait to see you back in action.